Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel once again. It's been an absolute scorch of a week. It was 30 degrees yesterday afternoon, which is good for hay, but it's not so good for working sheep. And that is why we're up early at the fat lambs to get them moved onto a fresh paddock before it gets too hot. And I'll explain exactly why we are actually doing this today and not grazing the whole field. So guys, we get these moved. Hope you enjoy it. If you do, don't forget to like, subscribe. That is the fat lambs quickly moved onto a fresh bite of grass this morning, or should I say a fresh paddock of grass this one, because we are trying something a little bit different with the big field this year. So it's a 20 acre field. If you just left them on this field as a whole, they wouldn't graze it particularly well. So we're trying something called paddock grazing or rotational grazing, where you split the field up into sections. This gives a really good shot at it. So this is one paddock here. And this is the second paddock that they're in now. So they're in a much higher stock in density on a small patch of land, which means they should graze far more efficiently. They've been in this paddock for four days, which is approximately probably about four acres. Hopefully I've split it into about five lots of four acres. They haven't grazed it right down because we don't want to wreck the grass as this is one of our top haylage fields but they've done a cracking job of grazing it and they grazed it far more efficiently. Another thing you'll see, because of the heat this week, a lot of this has started going to head and this little paddock was the same. So by not giving them an option and they've got to eat what's in front of them, they'll eat the bits of grass that they might leave if you gave them the whole field. For example, if this goes to plan, they should graze this whole field in about 20 days. Whereas if you gave them the whole lot, I'd bet my bottom dollar they'd take them a lot more time and they'd be leaving all these wispy bits. But the most important thing with these fat lambs is we're trying to keep them growing and by keeping decent quality grass ahead of them, rather than giving them a whole field, you're making sure you've got fresh grass every few days so you've got better quality grass rather than eating all the fresh grass across a whole field so they've got some poorer quality grazing for say the last week 10 days hopefully that should give you a brief overview of what we're doing here with the paddock grazing system really happy with how it has started Right, that is us all set up and ready for the use. It is the run up to tupping time now, so we're trying to get these as spick and spam as possible, as good on their feet as possible, and that is why we're using a foot bath today. We're using the CZF, which is the copper zinc formally. It's a nice blue color, and this is at 10% today. It's what we usually use. Fine, we get on really well with that. Um, just want to get them in and out as quick as possible because it's seriously heating up. And then at the end of this week, they have a lovely lush field of grass. I don't know how well you can see from here. That is what they're going to flush onto. So we're going to flush them for 17 days before tupping. The teas will go in two weeks before tupping. There's a lot going on, but the most important thing is to get them as spick and spam as possible and get their feet right because there is a couple lame ones and that will that will really affect fertility and not forgetting there is some of those bonus slams that need pulling out so while we're foot bathing them we'll pull them out into there if you can see those lame ones at the back they're the real reason we're getting these in just to make sure they're all fighting fit ready for the tub to come in because those ones at the back if they're that lame they're going to struggle to get pregnant good girl Joyce. Here now, Joes. You're good. Warm now. Woo. Considering the quality of grass I've been on, these clins don't struggle to put condition on. One thing I will say, there are an odd, odd couple like her and her that have um, reared lambs a bit later and the lambs are still on them. I might just pull them out tomorrow when I push these through the foot bath again and give them a little bit of corn for three weeks just to get a bit more condition on them. But apart from that, happy with them. So what we'll do, 
push them straight through into the foot bath. So I just won the from the big pen down through here through the footpath and back out into the field. And then any lambs are just going to go in this little pen here. All right, so let's get some water for Josie. Want to make sure she's all hydrated. This is for you. Good girl. There you go. That's for you. Nearly missed it. Go on, girls, thank you. Go on. Ooh. That's better. What we want to do is walk through, not jump through, so they get plenty of coverage on their feet. This one's a little lame. I think that's that one that was at the back. So you really want her to get covered. Two, two, four. It's another one that's a little bit lame. Hopefully this helps. That's it. Come on, girls. Come on, girls. Foot bathing is such a relaxing job if the sheep run. May as well just sit here and let them do it on their own. These last few are just popping through. Good thing if you use foot bath enough, they know what they're doing. And it's dry enough now that they haven't got anything on their feet, so all this, so the chemicals can get right up inside their hooves. For those of you that are new to channel or new to sheep, the reason we do this is because they get little infections in between their hooves by using a foot bath you kill that and basically they're right on the sheep. They're right on their feet then. Just making sure that they're not lame because lameness, they'll lose condition, they'll lose weight. And as I said before, we're coming to topping time. We want the sheep to be in as healthy state as possible so that they rear and are capable of rearing as many lambs as possible and growing them inside them too. Boom. If by magic. Sorted. I'm going to run them through, as I said before, again in the morning. All these lambs are now going to go in the back of my truck and be dropped off in the fat lambs. Not a bad, not a bad lot of lambs for ewes that weren't meant to give lamb. Well, we've got a foggy start this morning, which is nice and cool compared to yesterday. The sheep were like that. So we're just gonna do the morning checks and then we get back to those ewes, pick out the ones with poor condition scores and get them all foot bathed again. Fat lambs just took it into their breakfast. They've really settled in well to this new patch of ground. The only thing is, if you remember, we dropped off those lambs from the ewes yesterday. They haven't quite figured out what corn is yet. We've got the ewe lambs currently spread across a couple of fields. We've got the field that we're kind of using to hold sheep on when we don't own any electric fencing out. And then we've just opened up the little field over there which we've been smartening up. If you remember this year, that's got electric fence on. So they're across these two fields. And then in a couple of days, we'll shut them off straight onto the electric fence patch. But for now, they're all right chilling over the two. If by magic, that is them all in. So plan is now, I'm just going to mark up the beef lock so next time I shed them out it's going to be much quicker and anything that's just in a bit poorer condition I'm going to put an orange mark on the head so I can shed them off as they go through the foot bath. Go on guys.
that is all the use all sorted out so anything with b-flox got orange on its back as I said before just to manage it and make stuff easy and they've all ran through the foot bath again these are the six we've picked out which are in poorer condition they don't like good sheep but three weeks with a little bit of corn and really nice grass these should be all right the majority of these are ones that have had lambs late so we're just trying to get that condition onto them um as quick as possible as we go into topping yeah they're not the prettiest sight but trust me in a month's time they'll look way better Right, they're now going to join the ball of Leicesters and get a little bit of corn. So we are back a couple of days later and so far so good. I can't see any lame ewes. We've been away at the Russell Wild Clean Sale. Watch out for that video, it's coming soon. But yeah, we're going to move these now onto the flushing grass because we're now a week, so we're now 17 days away from lambing, which is really promising. Saying that, I can see one lame ewe there, but compared to what there was, it looks promising. That is them all moved. Really happy seeing them go across the field. The heads are all dropping down now onto this fresh, lovely bite of grass. This is just perfect to flush them on. Just looking here, probably about four or five, maybe six inches long. Perfect, perfect flushing grass. So for those who don't know what flushing means, it basically means you try and increase increase the nutritional value in their diet just before they go to the top because it might mean that they drop more eggs so that they have more lambs but yeah just look look at this really great flushing grass and that's a good job done all the ewes looking much better on the run in to lambing time so guys massive thank you for watching i really hope you enjoyed today's video if you did don't forget to like subscribe i'll see you next time